Hello, everyone, and welcome to our senior design project, Bruise Age Sensor. Uh, today, we'll be talking about our senior design Bruise Age Sensor. But to start, we will talk about what is a bruise. So, a bruise is a blood or bleeding under the skin caused by any trauma, look reddish at first, and as healing takes place, the colors start fading away from red to, to green to yellow, all the way to brown. So the problem here is that we are taking a pre-existed device and we are trying to enhance the collection of data on this device. We are trying to facilitate the transfer of data from the device to an external uh, computer. And we're also trying to calibrate the device to get more reliable and accurate data. The slice in the middle of design concepts, we will talk more about the design concepts of our uh, design. And here, this is an explorative view of our design. And in the results sections, these two graphs, we'll talk more in depth about it in the slides that's coming. Uh, many children experience maltreatment and physical abuse. Some are unable to elaborate the details of their incidents. So this has made a need for a device that collects bruise data in order to find a time window of when the bruise is acquired. The time window will aid officials in determining the patient's abuser. Uh, the concept is to make a device that is easy to operate and can collect bruise data without causing discomfort, discomfort to the patient. The data will then be transferred to a computer via Wi-Fi where the data will be analyzed with other measurements over time to approximate the age of the bruise in question. As we previously mentioned, we began this project with a pre-existing prototype. Our goal throughout this year was to fix and improve this device. We began this by diagnosing the problem, then splitting the code into smaller and more manageable sections. And each section corresponded to a major function of the device. Once all these sections of code were completed, we were then able to combine all the sections into one large code that is able to run the device. The main focus of our research was on the Beer-Lambert law and reflectance on a semi-infinite medium. Both of these laws will be used to analyze the captured optical data to determine the bruise's age. For the design concept, we have a compact design so the device can be easily transported. Comfortability not cause any pain or discomfort to the patient. The ability to distinguish between patients, the organization, and data transfer by using Wi-Fi uh, for the ease of use. Of course, a backup collection of all the data. For the requirement verification, we designed three different tests. The accuracy acceptance test is designed to ensure that enough data is being collected for the analysis. The reproducibility test is used to verify that the BAS can reproduce a data sample. And the user interface demonstration is used to verify the BS can transmit data wirelessly, also providing the results of data transfer. For the verification table, we have passed most of our system requirements except for measurement, which is that the BAS shall estimate the percentage of each bruise component. And we, we have passed accuracy. We passed repeat reproducibility, we passed identification, we, we passed distinction, we passed spectra, we passed Wi-Fi, we passed automation, we passed backup, we didn't pass display, which is that the, the computer shall display the composition of bruise component, and we didn't pass user interface, which is that the BAS shall tell if the transfer of the data was successful or unsuccessful. Here are the results that we obtained from our device. The graphs on top show like data collected from a wide service and we can see in the left, uh, in the top left, we can see a saturation in the signals where in the right we see a better signal that we received. The lower, uh, the bottom uh, graphs also show uh, data collected from unbruised skin and we actually uh, see better uh, data collection here. Now we will show them some demonstration. 
this is the device display. We have the LCD on the left. You can see the joystick on the right. We have two buttons. And then this is the main display after the device has been turned on. We have new cases, a new patient. We have two cases, the new patient and reaching patients, and these will be associated with the buttons on the right. This is the LED sequence. We have four types of LEDs. This will be turned on during taking measurements. We have UV, infrared, near infrared, and white. This is the case of a new patient. So the user will press A and it will generate a patient ID and then it will take measurement. The patient ID will be used to name the file of the patient on the device. This is the same case, existing patient. The user will press B and then it will promote the user to input the existing patient ID. And then it will uh, take measurements. The measurement will be appended at the end of the existing file. Uh, pictured here on the left is a patient file displaying the timestamp along with the LEDs and their corresponding measurements. On the right is the serial monitor displaying how the data transfer process is performed. Um, the following video will show the data transfer process in real time. And on the left here is the spreadsheet that we actually send all this data to in order to analyze. Here all the measurements were read and sending individually. Over here we have uh, our budget and deliverables. We have a budget of 4,000 and we have used um, $1,982. Our deliverables are all on May 5th. And uh, the, pri the surprises we had uh, were, um, we did not have uh, a Golden Standard test and uh, we were working on uh, an existing project and uh, COVID-19 is uh, affecting our project currently. And uh, problems uh, to overcome, we have limited knowledge, a function of uh, the original code. And um, in terms of Wi-Fi, um, we're using a specific Arduino, uh, so uh, we have a limited functionality. And um, uh, we are discarding uh, some of uh, the hardware from our design, and uh, we are adding an RTC uh, to keep track of the data in time of the data codes. Um, lessons learned, we have more research uh, of primary hardware, and um, uh, we are troubleshooting uh, the, the code, which, uh, which shows us it is uh, time consuming. And um, we have at least two of each part, just in case uh, anything breaks. And uh, we often uh, ask more questions to the sponsors. At the end, we want to acknowledge and have special thanks to Dr. Ors and his uh, PhD student, Devish Kosla. And if you have any questions, please email us. Thank you.